Today, March 19, 2021, we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph. The Holy Father has dedicated this year to St. Joseph because he models for us, as we find in the encyclical Patris Corde, published on the 150th anniversary of the proclamation of St. Joseph as patron of Universal Church, the dynamics of being a beloved father, an obedient father, an accepting father. Father Joseph Cantoni, whose name day we celebrate today, also models for us these dynamics of being and teaches us how to model in our lives these essential characteristics of fatherhood in our present times. He is convinced that the salvation of our world starts in each family. With a father's heart, that is how Joseph loved Jesus, by making his life a sacrificial service to the mystery of the incarnation and its redemptive purpose. Due to his role in salvation history, we Christians are summoned to follow the example of St. Joseph in his daily, discreet, and hidden presence. It is a journey and invitation to go out of our way for the sake of the gospel, to take strides in imitating St. Joseph's commitment to Mary and the child Jesus. We speak here of establishing a personal encounter with the person of St. Joseph. Our starting point becomes his relationship to Jesus and Mary, a relationship and journey that takes us into distant lands. The destination of St. Joseph was always for him the will of the Father, which was concretely expressed in dreams, eliciting the protection of the child Jesus. Today, we are invited to reflect how we may protect and save Jesus and Mary in these, our modern times. A Beloved Father With a husband's love, St. Joseph cherished Mary, and with fatherly care he watched over Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. As a beloved father, St. Joseph's heart became the first living shrine where Jesus and Mary were perfectly at home. He concretely expressed his fatherhood by making his life a sacrificial service to the mystery of the Incarnation and its redemptive purpose. He turned his human vocation to domestic love into a superhuman oblation of himself, his heart, and his abilities. Father Kentenich had a great love for his patron saint, St. Joseph. He said that St. Joseph recognized the great mystery in the life of Mary. He became her great protector, her veil, her support. Father Joseph Kentenich also recognized the great task which the Blessed Mother was called to accomplish. Testimonies of his fatherhood and mission consciousness give witness to it. Father Kentenich has communicated his life to me in communicating to me his world of Schoenstatt. I turned to him, therefore, with a great need I had, knowing him to be a loving father. My artistic son was becoming hard to manage at home with his outbursts and rages of energy. I feared, against my wish, that I would have to put him in a home. I prayed much to Father Kentenich and believe he answered my prayer in helping me to find a doctor who altered his medications, which helped my son to be much more balanced again. I would like to base this witness on the phrase that, as a beloved father, Joseph's heart became the first living shrine 
where Jesus and Mary were perfectly at home. And connected to Father Kentenich's development of the ideal of the living shrine while he was in exile in Milwaukee. My parents became a living shrine where Jesus and Mary were perfectly at home through their living shrine dedication on February 2nd, 1964. We listened to Father Kentenich's words offered in prayer, directed to my mom and dad, and the symbols they selected from the living shrine, the wine for my mother and the chalice for my father. From Father Kentenich, the mother of this family would like to symbolize the wine, the wine that is used at the Holy Mass. It has two qualities. First, it must be pure wine, genuine wine, otherwise it is not permitted for use at the Holy Mass. She, as the mother of the family, must be first a good wife, a mother through and through a fine, noble woman. There should be nothing artificial in her, nothing that pretends to be something that one actually is not, not be any intrigue in her acting. The mother of the family, too, wants to mirror Our Lady in her genuineness. The second quality of wine consists in this, Wine is changed during Holy Mass into the precious blood of Christ. Thus the mother of the family does not want to be only genuine, healthy, and good on an ethical level. No, she also wants to be noble, womanly, genuine on a higher level. She wants to be raised to the supernatural atmosphere, to be a living reflection of the eternal and infinite God. This warm supernatural atmosphere and spirit that comes from her and out of her must draw everyone's heart to God, lift them up. The father of the family would like to be symbolized in the chalice. The chalice is his great ideal. The chalice used at Holy Mass must be a golden one. Why? Because it will hold time and again the divine blood of God. First, everything in him should be golden should become golden, genuine. His whole being, in essence, wants to be connected immediately with the eternal, infinite Father God. So it is the ideal of the Golden Father to represent and reflect in his whole being the Eternal Father. The second great quality of the chalice consists in this. In the chalice, the wine will be changed into the precious blood of Jesus. Thus, the father of the family wants to be the picture of the innerly, totally transformed man, of the transformed family father. We hear in these words of Father Kentenich suitable images of St. Joseph and Father Kentenich themselves. These words were taken in deeply by my dad and mom, and they took seriously this yearning for spiritual transformation and strove to live each day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Through their examples, they passed on this driving also to their children. Now, when my dad, Raymond Yank, first met Father Kentenich, he right away felt a connection to him because of the German language. My dad's parents were from Austria, so German was spoken in his home during his childhood. My dad's father passed away when my dad was seven years old, and then he lost his mother when he was nine. So my dad not only felt a connection to Father Kentenich because of the German language, but my dad also took Father Kentenich into his heart as his spiritual foster father. When my mom Eleanor Yank first met Father Kentenich, she was very uncomfortable with him because he looked and sounded like an old German priest at her parish when she was a child. That priest was very gr gruff and at times unkind. But it didn't take my mom very long to see that Father Kentenich was totally different and he won her over wholeheartedly by his gentle fatherly ways. And both of my parents saw what a true father he was by how he interacted with all of us when he came to our home on several occasions. Dear St. Joseph, how much you love Jesus and Mary. Intercede for husbands and fathers that they too may love their wives and children with deep and faithful love, and be a source of strength and protection for the family as a whole. Let the domestic church, the family, be a realm of mutual love, a colony of heaven. And let the whole church, as the family of God, be outstanding for its charity, 
See how they love one another. Amen. St. Joseph took the Blessed Mother into his home. He could do this because he had taken her into his heart with deep reverential love, with self-sacrificing love. He accepted God's plan and also experienced the type of Annunciation. The faith of Mary meets the faith of St. Joseph as he responded, accepting the word of God in obedience of faith. This total sacrifice, whereby St. Joseph surrendered his whole existence to the demands of the Messiah's coming into his home, becomes understandable only in the light of his profound interior life. Joseph accepted Mary unconditionally. God helped him by enlightening his judgment. Unless we are reconciled with our own history, we will be unable to take a single step forward, for we will always remain hostage to our expectations and the disappointments that follow. The spiritual path that Joseph traces for us is not one that explains, but accepts. Father Joseph Kentenich too acknowledged that St. Joseph was the cause of great joy for the Blessed Mother and her child. He also knew that St. Joseph continues accepting his task of caring for the mother and her child from heaven. Father Joseph Kentenich, with his charism, also joyfully occupied himself with the care of little Marys and their mission to bring Christ anew into our world. Of him we may say, The Lord has put his faithful servant in charge of his household. His was a tested fatherhood, a proven fatherhood. He intercedes for our intentions before the throne of God. Again, we hear another example of his mediation. After my husband's death of eight years, I met a man and married for a second time. However, my daughters were not accepting of their new stepdad. I prayed for a long time to Father Kentenich that he might help in this situation. After about a year, everything started to fall into place, and I truly believe Father Kentenich heard my prayers. The Accepting Father As St. Joseph accepted Mary unconditionally, Mom and Dad took Father Kentenich's teaching on living a deep faith in divine providence seriously, and the ideal of unconditional acceptance of all from the Heavenly Father, and included the concept in their home shrine name, Ita Pater Stabat Mater, Yes Father, Sorrowful Mother. Trust in divine providence came naturally to my mom and dad. During the first years of marriage, when dad was completing his master's degree, money was scarce and groceries were low. But they trusted that Providence would take care of them, and God always did. My dad had a saying, if we accept each child that God wants to send, then he will surely give us what we need. When there were already many children, my dad joined a strike for better working conditions for his teaching position at MATC. Although mom and dad could barely afford to go out on strike, They felt that the fight for shorter working hours to allow Dad to spend more time with his family was worth it. For most of the others, the reason for the strike was for greater pay increases. The strike lasted 40 days, and there was little money for groceries. It was during this time that Mom and Dad crowned the Blessed Mother, Bread Mother, in the home shrine. Although we had many meals of beans, we never went hungry. This deep faith in divine providence served mom, served mom her entire life, especially after my dad, dad's death at the age of 48, with 11 of their 12 children still at home, and the youngest child only six years old. The Ita Pater, or Yes Father, portion of the family home shrine name came specifically from my mom. It was good that she was able to develop that deep faith in divine providence through the direction and example of Father Kentenich, because she had to to rely on almost only that 
through a large portion of her life as a single mother of a very large family. So my dad and mom saw Father Kentenich as an accepting father in how he made time for people whenever they wanted to talk with him. He was always cheerful and thinking of needs of others, no matter what language they spoke or what country they were from. My parents especially felt how accepting Father Kentenich was when they came to the Monday night talks. He made them feel at home, and although they didn't know German fluently and were younger than the other couples, he accepted them as part of the family of the Monday night couples. Today, we are even more interested in hearing what St. Joseph's mission was than in viewing his personality and virtues. Concerning the saint's mission, we find a classical wording in Holy Scripture. Joseph, rise, take the child and his mother. It must be quite essential, for it is written twice. The Blessed Mother is inseparably united to Jesus. The mission of St. Joseph did not consist only in realizing this two-in-oneness personally during his own life. No, he was chosen somehow to tell all nations of this inseparable two-in-oneness between the two. Joseph fries, take the child and his mother. St. Joseph's mission is my mission, our mission, Schoenstatt's mission. An obedient father. As he had done with Mary, God revealed his saving plan to Joseph. He did so by using dreams. St. Joseph was called by God to serve the person and mission of Jesus directly through the exercise of his fatherhood, and in this way he cooperated in the fullness of time in the great mystery of salvation. Anne is truly a minister of salvation. Joseph Kentenich too practiced obedience by listening to God's will, not only through the scriptures, but also through those entrusted to his care and through the most little situations in daily life. Father Kentenich's obedience was a permanent spiritual readiness to fulfill God's will, even when it means an arid and uncomfortable life. Again, we listen to a testimony of another who experienced the faithful intercession of Father Joseph Cantoni. I was in a job situation where the morale was very low. I needed this good paying job and wasn't ready to risk looking for another job and taking a pay cut. I prayed to Father Cantoni to send me a sign and help me in my discernment. Two weeks later, my landlord met me as I was entering my apartment and asked me if I'd be willing to help a friend of his who was looking to hire a part-time secretary. I prayed again to Father Kentenich for discernment and when I ended up applying for the job, I was offered a full-time position matching my present salary. The Obedient Father 
As we just heard, Father Joseph Kentenich practiced obedience by listening to God's will, not only through the scriptures, but also through those entrusted to his care and through the little situations in daily life. Through his teaching on fatherhood, Father Kentenich helped my dad see the obedience he was called to in his vocation as father of the family. My dad's life can be divided into two periods of time. There is the pre schonstadt time, before he was transformed by the Blessed Mother through his covenant of love, and the post schonstadt time. The Blessed Mother used Father Kentenich as an instrument to bring about this transformation. During the first years of his marriage, during the pre schonstadt time, my dad had a deep love for mom and his children, but he also loved doing work, apostolic work for the church. He became deeply involved in the Legion of Mary in the parish and spent many hours doing the required work of the apostolate. When the family was young and growing, he was gone many evenings on visitation calls and weekends at meetings. He didn't realize that the amount of time he was putting away from home due to his profession and his apostolic work was putting a strain on their marriage. It was during this time that my dad was introduced to Father Kentenick through the Schoenstatt sisters who were serving in the parish and school at St. Philip Neri, where he did work for the Legion of Mary. Eventually, my mom and dad started attending Monday night talks in December 1960. About that time, Father Kentenick began a new series of talks on marriage, followed by talks on motherhood, fatherhood, education of children, among others. A conversion of heart took place sometime during these talks, and in time, Dad left the outside, outside apostolic work of the Legion of Mary and began to spend most of his time outside of his school hours with his wife and children. Within one and a half years, my mom and dad made the covenant of love on the blank check and inscriptio levels, and through Father Kentenich's fatherly guidance, dad became a great family man who became convinced that his first apostolate was to his marriage and family. My parents saw Father Kentenich's obedience in how he said yes to being exiled to Milwaukee. He never mentioned anything about how he suffered here in being separated from his Schoenstatt family in Germany. My parents also saw Father Kentenich's obedience in fulfilling his commitment by coming to our house the night before he left Milwaukee. And they saw his obedience when he didn't question when he was summoned to Rome and told he could go back to Germany after being in Milwaukee for 14 years. They could see his great love for the church and admired him all the more when they found out much later how important he felt his own obedience was. The fourth guiding star of the Nazareth family is pronounced obedience. A very unique law prevails in the Holy Family. The higher the persons ranked, the stronger was their obedience. Christ had to obey both of them, the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph. The woman also had to obey. The father remains the head of the family. But he too was a man of obedience. He followed the angel's messages. This simple, strong obedience is one of the most important domestic virtues.